as we move around, surrounded by technology and the achievements of modern engineering, we wonder. Where did it all begin? Engineering. It is the discipline that has shaped the world we live in, an anchor of human progress. But, to understand where we are today, we must first explore the roots of engineering education in India. And the best way to do that is to explore the origins of four of the earliest engineering colleges of India. To showcase the historical perspective of India's technical education, Chairman AICTE, Professor T.G. Sitaram invited the current heads of these illustrious institutions. So very good morning to all of you. Friends, uh, technical education has played a pivotal role in shaping India's socio-economic and industrial development. From the establishment of early engineering colleges during the British colonial period, in the present day, network of globally recognized evolution of technical education in India reflects the nation's progress and aspirations. Today, I wish to explore this journey with the pertinent who represent these legacy institutions providing technical education in the country. I have with me Dr. J. Prakash, Registrar of Anna University, formerly College of Engineering, Gindi, established in 1794. We have Professor Kamal Kishore Pant, Director, IIT Roorkee, formerly Thompson College of Engineering, established in 1847. And Professor S.G. Burit, Vice Chancellor, College of Engineering, Pune, established in 1854. And finally, Professor Vyamasar Murthy, Director, IIEST, Shipur, established in 1856. As one of the oldest engineering colleges in India, uh, I will come to Anna University. Can you share the motivations behind its founding during the British colonial period? In 1794, a survey school was established by Michael Topping, an astronomical surveyor working for the East India Company. The school was uh, uh, started functioning from out of a building near Saint Fort St. George and mainly the trained surveyors. The first batch had eight students and uh, they, were, they were orphaned Anglo-Indians. In 1858, this survey school was upgraded to a civil engineering school and in 1859, it became a civil engineering college and this college started offering diploma in civil engineering for the upper and lower subordinate of public works department mainly for the public, public works department, the school was uh, uh, established. And in 1861, this uh, civil engineering college became affiliated with University of Madras and it started offering a bachelor's, three-year bachelor of civil engineering. And the first batch of students graduated in 1864. And in 1894, the mechanical engineering program was introduced and the degree name was changed to Bachelor of Engineering because the college was offering both civil and mechanical engineering. And the college name was also changed from Madras Engineering College to the College of Engineering. And in 1912, the duration of the engineering program was extended from three years to four years. And in 1920, the College of Engineering moved to its current location, that is the Gindi, and it officially became the College of Engineering Gindi. And in 1930, the electrical engineering program was started. And in 1935, the college introduced research degree. And uh, in 1940, the first women engineering uh, engineers graduated from our campus. They are Ms. A. Lalita, graduated from electrical engineering, and Ms. Uh, Leela Jaj, graduated in civil engineering. And in 1946, the first PhD in engineering through research was awarded in electrical engineering. And in 1959, the four-year engineering program was changed to five years after the introduction of pre-university degree in arts colleges. And in 1971, we introduced part-time degree programs for working professionals. And in 1978, by amalgamating four technical institutions, College of Engineering, Gindi, Madras Institute of Technology, 
Alagappa College of Technology and School of Architecture and Planning, Anna University was established in 1978. And in the, the four institutions, if you see Madras Institute of Technology, from where our uh, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam passed out, passed out, he's our distinguished alumnus. And this uh, MIT campus was established in 1949 by one of the philanthropists, Sri C. Rajam. And this uh, uh, MIT campus was offering uh, programs, uh, unconventional engineering programs, namely aeronautical engineering, automobile engineering, yeah, uh, and uh, uh, instrumentation engineering and electronics engineering. We, the MIT was the first to offer engineering programs in aeronautical, automobile, uh, and electronics and instrumentation engineering. And uh, the College of Engineering in India mainly focused on applied in, on conventional engineering like civil, mechanical, and electrical, whereas MIT focus was was offering applied engineering, aeronautical, automobile, instrumentation, and electronics engineering. Whereas Alagappa College of Technology. Uh, was offering programs related to technology, chemical engineering, food technology, ceramic technology, uh, and textile technology were the courses that were offered at Alagappa College of Technology. And the SAP campus was offering programs related to BARC. Uh, so the, these are the programs that were offered in the four campuses which got amalgamated in 1978. And in 1982, we started offering computer science engineering program. and. Uh, uh, in 1978, it was it was a unitarian university established by the government of Tamil Nadu, and in 2001, the university was converted into an affiliating type university where all the private self-financing colleges were affiliated to Anna University. So, how many now today? How many colleges are affiliated with Anna University? Uh, 488 engineering colleges are affiliated uh, uh, with Anna and, University. And four constituent. Uh, and in addition to the, uh, and uh, Anna University itself has 16 constituent colleges, oh. which were established in rural areas. To support rural uh, areas of technical education, the government, the government of Tamil Nadu directed Anna University to establish uh, engineering colleges. And they are functioning in tier two, tier 2 and Tier 3 cities, and they cater to rural and semi-urban areas. So now I will go to Professor Pant, because you be, your institute being the second oldest engineering institution in our country. So can you just tell us what was the motivation behind the founders that time for starting this Thompson College of Engineering? And today it is known as very famous Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee. Thank you for this question. And uh, so let me tell you the history of the Indian Institute of Technology, Roorkee, earlier called at Thompson College of Engineering. So in 1847, right, uh, the, that uh, that time governor of this uh, area, uh, James Thompson. So you know that the first. Let me talk about the geography of the Rudki, which is situated in Uttarakhand, and uh, this is called the land of God also, and uh, the Ganges right uh, flows to the right uh, the Himalaya and then comes across this right uh, all over the country. So the idea came into the mind that can we utilize these resources of right river Ganga, Ganges River, for right societal purpose or for transportation purpose. So, so with this idea, uh, in 1847 this institute was established, and that time it was named as Thompson College of Engineering, basically, right? And uh, civil engineering was the only branch, and this was only for the Britishers. Right, uh, for their education and train them for right the utilization of the resources of water. And uh, in 19 or oh, 1849, then it would be made because 1852 it was when this right all these things established and uh, uh, then governor right because this Thompson Engineering College and all these things. So it was named as Thompson College of Engineering because this aqueduct was right the first aqueduct where you have a very unique design, the below is the river, then you have the canal and then road, right? And other part of this, you will see river and then road and then canal. This is a very unique design, which is named it aqueduct. The purpose was because Uttarakhand has a lot of resources of wood materials, right? Very high quality locks and these were cut and they transported to the river. So that time, this was the history in the beginning. Then uh, after the independence, in 1952, 
it was named as University of Prokuti. So, so if you look at the overall history, this engineering college, if you look at, this is called in the British colonial right, oldest one in the Asia, right, and number two in the world. And uh, in the uh, University of Brokuti, when right, it started, it had all the branches, right, which are the traditional branches. And metallurgical branch is one of the right most promising branch of this University of Brokuti, right. And uh, uh, you know that uh, gradually several other branches also came into the picture. And in 2001, uh, this is the era when IIT Roorkee, the seventh IIT right of the nation and institute of the right national importance it was given. So 2001 onwards, this is called the IIT Roorkee. The foundation day of IIT, right, when you talk University of Roorkee, still we call it 25th November. And uh, the IIT Roorkee became on 25th. First of the September. If you look at the history of this right evolution, there are several phases which came, and one of the most famous right Kulgit, which we call right, which was written by uh, our right uh, from Uttarakhand only, C. Sumitra Nandan Panji in 1961, he wrote that, and we accepted this as our Kulgit, and which is which includes all these kind of development when you talk about Jayati Jayati Vidya Sastan, it starts from there. And it had the word Sumam Vinana Kamapi Sadhyam Ratam. That also talks about that hard work, right? Always pays you. Without hard work, you cannot get. Antriks Mayan Ulakar, Navjukko De Tahwan. So the thought process, right, which has been written in this Kulgit, and that is now coming through science and technology, right? And the most important part of the education, which I always say, right, Dhyay Rashtra Jeevan Kalyan. So you have to give, right, whatever the knowledge that should be for the welfare of the nation or society at large, right? So, I think this is where the education system, right, started. And when we talk about our old Indian knowledge system, right, ancient, so all those cultures were there. With advancement of the science and technology, IIT Roorkee also, right, had taken the lead now. And uh, uh, you know that when we talk about, right, uh, how the science and technology right together can be joined and finally stem uh, right where the all these kind of this should be routed through economics right mathematics management so this is now we have covered so now in the institute that time it was traditional five branches mm -hmm. right uh, when you talk about university of Rorke. now we have a in total if you look at 24 departments in the right uh, campus and uh, 14 centers and one school of data science and artificial intelligence. So we believe in multidisciplinary as per the national education policy 2020. We have changed our curriculum and look forward the holistic development of the student. So historically, when you see right uh, the IIT Roorkee, now earthquake engineering is a very unique branch. Then hydrology, right? Uh, you are aware, geological, right? Uh, science and. Uh, these are what you call right the backbone when you talk about the Uttarakhand geographical conditions also because there are a lot of right issues related to floods, cloud busting, land subsidence, and uh, several Hima, Hima issues related to Himalaya right glacier melting. Uh, so we are taking care of all these through the knowledge of our right uh, the faculty and they are utilizing their knowledge for reducing these kind of right. Uh, disasters which happen. So we have a center for disaster mitigation and management also, which is right uh, also uh, looking forward that how that can serve the nation, right, with their knowledge. So these are the right, uh, when you look at the overall history of the Thompson College of Engineering to IIT Rurki, so lot of changes in between. So we have celebrated our 175 years of establishment. Now we are running at 178. And the book has been released, so I share that book also with all of you. And uh, right uh, on the website, also this is available. So we will just have that uh, data. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Professor Pant. I think the growth is phenomenal. From the day, you know, Thompson College of Engineering started, as you rightly said, it is the first engineering college yeah. as a full blown. Yeah. So I, I've also seen a lot of activities on canal engineering happening in that area. Yeah. Okay. So can you would like to talk about something on how these, uh, why these canals were constructed other than the aqueduct you talked about, hmm. okay? And uh, what was the emphasis at that time other than, uh, you know, using the water resources for agricultural purposes, yeah, yeah. 
and any other you know agenda was there as you rightly said it was also used for transportation of uh, goods and other things so can you say something about the canal engineering and how it will evolve because very fundamental work on canal engineering has been done at uh, thomson college of engineering yeah you have very rightly pointed out uh, that uh, uh, as i said that right ganges river right uh, which uh, right passes through all over part of the right uh, city different cities or states of the country but the uh, canal engineering because ruchi has its heritage in terms of civil engineering branch right yes. uh, and besides this uh, civil engineering branch we have five different major branches who works on the water right uh, like water resource mm-hmm. development and management yes. right we have hydro and uh, renewable energy now right we so and national institute of hydrology is also inside our campus itself and also the center for building cdri yes, we call yes, center yes. building research institute so these are within inside campus and i appreciate that time the mindset right that how these right the one river which is flowing through the right uh, can be diverted into different parts for supply of the water because you know that uh, uh, uttarakhand again as i will say that the geographically the, there is always a had been this cast of water despite the ganges river right so so the climatic conditions when you talk about when you talk about the requirement of water for irrigation as you were talking right so the so there was always need of the water right in rest of the part also and rudki itself right when you say the the ganges which flows from haridwar right so the canal this rudki canal which you say right that has been designed and the beside this aqueduct the rudki canal now flows right uh, through that uh, rudki and it rudki when you say right uh, uh there are besides it rudki there is a bengal engineering group also the which is which is just mm-hmm. suggest and the first railway line was laid there only right we just the uh, goods train which was passed that was in uh, thompson right again that is named there engine that is there and that was also the part so to develop this area in total right there was the need of the water and that time this canal was also laid which has served the multiple purpose not only agriculture but also for the multiple purpose it was a kind of right uh, when you look at the transportation supply right supply of potable water and then there are several religious aspects also there yes, right yes. so that's that a is, very important yeah, point yeah that is very important haridwar haridwar aarti se lapan yeah. and haridwar yes, yes. haridwar all of you know yeah. right this is the one of the right religious point which is called right and kum also all of you must have heard so that time this was the idea that this canal was right thank you to start thank you professor pant yeah. now i will move to professor birul the college of engineering pune okay so can you again you know i would like to ask you what was the motivation that time for starting the coep and how this evolved over a period of time yeah is uh, when we say pune pune is basically known for its uh, heritage culture and education reforms uh, and then uh, now this uh, college of engineering pune now started in 18 54 uh, to cater the need of uh, you know the local workers because the bridges canals and then roads were being constructed including railways and and to support the construction of all these you know uh, this transportation facilities a uh, manpower was required and that's how this uh, pune engineering class and mechanical school was established in uh, 1854 uh, at a um, uh lees uh, you know place provided by uh, padam ji family and <clears throat> initially in fact it was started as a um, um, as a sanskrit uh, pathshala and then added in added english and then become you know the the school for mechanics that's a very interesting you know, uh, uh, you know, it was just three decades after the fall of uh, peshwa uh, resume it started and then initially uh, they started with free education and some scholarship to the students to encourage the students to take this thing. and then later on you know after it became a viable in and then then they started charging the uh, students and since it was just uh, supporting the government system it was thought that why not uh, to build it for a public um, you know uh, for general uh, public and that's how Uh, uh mr jahangir he gave 50000 uh, rupees that time to establish a new uh, campus and that campus started uh, in 1860 uh, there was the mughal kingdom uh, 
ಡಿಗ್ರಿ so agriculture was was added and forestry courses were added hmm. so along with these basic uh, licensure programs these courses were included in the, and they were supporting so along with civil engineering these programs or these courses were added together and in the main building they had a dome of 20 feet and 16.5 inch telescope was set up there and they they added physics and astronomy as a course in the um, as a as a voluntary course in the licensed program and later on uh, in 1886 the the licensed programs were again upgraded based on the eligibility criteria and all that before that uh, in 1884 uh, um, sir uh, mokshagandam vishweshwari he graduated uh, his uh, you know licensed in civil engineering with first class from college of engineering uh kuna that that that's the milestone um in the history of uh, college of engineering kuna during uh, you know the uh, later on you know the college strength increased and then the forestry courses they were you know separated out they were closed down later on again the agriculture college at the courses which were offered in agriculture engineering they were shifted to newly constituted agriculture engineering college and that's how it became a pure engineering college and then this the college was renamed as a college of engineering and uh, and then you know uh, the science programs which were you know offered they were shifted to newly established institute of science at bombay mm-hmm. and then 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 the, the college became you know then the college after 83 years of association with bombay university was shifted to affiliated to university of pune which was um you know established that time and then the first civil engineering uh, graduated in 1912 uh, and the mechanical engineering was started in 1914 during during the world war 2 which started in 1914 the workshop and the other laboratories they were used to uh, to manufacture the the um, supporting uh, you know the uh the cells for the um, soldiers oh, and really? and you know the entire uh, the facilities were being used for uh, the helping the war uh, warriors and all that and then now uh, again you know it has meanwhile it has gone through different uh, you know the versions like first three years then five years again four years uh during world war ii you know the degree was uh, again converted to three and a half years based on the inputs uh, worldwide and that's how you know it has gone through different uh, phases of uh, you know the transitions and at the end in 1925 uh, the workshop certificate programs were formally converted into diploma programs in civil electrical and mechanical engineering which were later on you know um, you know converted uh, into a bridge course like converted into a combined course where diploma in electrical and mechanical they were combined and the duration was again increased to four years so it was a joint uh, program uh, offered that time then uh, the first girl student was admitted in 1932 yeah. in the institution and uh, <laughs> the metallurgy and telecommunication department they were added in 1948 and 1952 uh, be electrical and mechanical engineering which were combined together they were separated uh, with a duration of three years that's how the transition took place from multiple combinations and then 
uh, based on the uh, the the requirements okay. that time and then uh, you know later on um, you know uh, in 19 as i said 1952 itself uh, we started with uh, mechanical say, mtech in civil engineering mtech in structural engineering and m uh, sorry me in civil engineering me in structural engineering and me in uh, telecommunication technology so cop was the first institution in the country to start the telecommunication um, based courses in the uh, in the 1950s that's how and later on you know um, it continued right now um, uh, we are a university we are conferred the university status in uh, 2022 before that we were autonomous institution uh, from 2003 to 2022 um, to facilitate the tech cube program we were the tech cube 1 2 3 um you know beneficiaries where the institution was the best performing institutions across country thank you thank, thank you professor mirud but i would like to also see today pune is a very industrialized city with a lot of automobile industries and other thing how college of engineering pune shaped that ecosystem yeah. in your city any yeah, very interesting question yeah. because you know uh, as i said it's also industrial hub the first generation entrepreneurs they came from say, college of engineering like you take bajaj hmm. you take firodia uh they established their you know the industrial you know the base in pune and that has created a big opportunities both for job as well as the uh, entrepreneurs many of the msme entrepreneurs supporting the the ancillary industries they came up supporting these two big uh you know the automobile industries and and uh, uh hundreds and thousands of the alumni they are the first generation uh um, you know entrepreneurs because of this automobile hub and now it is also it hub which is again supported by our alumni thank you, thank you. so now i'll go to professor murthy you know iest uh in kolkata is also you know uh, created a complete ecosystem of industrial educational institutions in in that region so can you just talk about how what was the growth story of uh, uh, the bengal college of engineering thank you sir uh, i think uh, uh, just to draw, draw analogy uh, i start with like probably the concept of introducing the higher education technical education in india Uh, was well thought out and uh, as it was started with anna university we we discussed about more or less in the similar lines probably this institute also got birth actually or the similar lines it followed so exactly what i found is what anna university kind of growth was there that was uh, basically taking care of south while this was taking care of the east part of the india and uh, while uh, north was taking care of by thompson college and the west was taken care of by pune so what i see is uh, geographically the education system higher education technical education system was you know taking roots in those times which was basically stemmed from the needs for technical skills uh, to be made indigenously available while you know like uh, the engineers requirement uh, to meet the uh, uh, growing societal needs that was primary reason particularly in construction industry also so this was you know there was a beginning in uh, uh, calcutta also that this was felt and east india company you know started all with that and then so slowly and slowly it went into uh, formation of uh, a college that uh, you know basically to meet the public works actually that was the one. and again the same kind of you know analogy i'll draw from there and uh, it all started with a civil engineering college way back in 12th february 1856 it got uh, you know mooted and then uh, and the first batch was you know with 10 students and uh, with only two staff actually so it started a very humble beginning and uh, it was uh, taking shape into it, initially it was in calcutta university and subsequently it moved you know for the operational convenience it moved from uh, calcutta writers building to you know a b college shipur so it, it went through different uh, phases like as uh, uh, professor uh, the college of engineering pune was talking about is uh, 1861 it started with a licentiate in civil engineering and mm-hmm. then uh, uh, bachelor of uh, civil engineering so core it was uh, focusing on civil engineering so then it moved down to the needs for meeting the requirements of uh, electricity so they moved to you know introducing the electrical engineering branch uh, then subsequently there was agriculture requirement also it was also being looked at so talk, taking from civil engineering from canal construction 
and then leading water and leading to agriculture. So agriculture engineering was started. Then it went into um, um, this uh, mining engineering. So because the resources were required, so that was also thought it was necessary. So mining engineering was providing the raw materials. And then to process it, the metallurgical engineering was required. So that's how metallurgical engineering also got. So these were the four major engineering branches that were started with. And subsequently, uh, looking into the needs of the uh, industry, if you look at it, uh, mechanical engineering and uh, telecommunication engineering, this is also another oldest one. And another important thing, a PG program in naval architecture was also introduced considering the need to, uh, you know, uh, look for the transportation need of the Ganges actually. So they were mm -hmm. bringing a lot of material through Ganges, uh, so to the port of, you know, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose port. So that is another one. And then subsequently, the doctoral studies and DPhil studies also way back in 1906. It started and uh, even 1955 started DPhil and uh, even technical teachers training is also first time it was started in 1959 because the need oh, for uh, training the teachers was also felt and in, uh, way back in 1959-60 this was done and uh, then subsequently it moved to uh, as a first engineering college offering metallurgy in 1939 and then uh, shipbuilding and uh, aeronautics was started in 1943 not 1945. Then came, you know, the humanities and um, applied mechanics in 1946 and a department of training also got established because to, we wanted to, you know, prepare our students to take on the industry uh, properly. So, a formal training institute for uh, uh, training the students also came up. And then in department of architecture and uh, uh, town planning also started in 1949. That's also okay. pretty old. And the master's program formally started in 1953. This is also another, more or less it draws parallel with other institutions. Electronics started in 1968, looking into the needs of the country for developing this uh, area. Then uh, computer center and then subsequently, uh, uh, this, this was a journey, you know, before uh, under the BE college. This was, you know, this college is actually popularly known as BE college, Shipur. Uh, initially, it started with, uh, you know, civil engineering college, Calcutta, then subsequently, it's called known as B Engineering College. So the, most of the alumni are more, uh, you know, fond of you know using this B College as one of the you know recognizing factor for them. That's right. Uh, then um, though it started with the Bishop College, what we call uh, similar to Thompson College, now it moved to B College. Then it became a deemed university in 1993-2004, where uh, it went into uh, initially under the state-aided uh, category and then subsequently under UGC. And then onwards, uh, it was converted in 2014 as a central institute taken by Ministry of Education. So this is the journey. And uh, this journey, if you look at, uh, it started with the requirement of uh, meeting the societal needs post uh, uh, Second World War. Uh, and when we were building our own uh, country to have our indigenous engineers uh, to, uh, you know, prop up our uh, infrastructure requirements. And uh, this was felt actually. And uh, uh, pr probably before the, uh, even even the uh, idea of, you know, moving the IIT uh, institutional uh, commitment also was done in these colleges only. If you look at this, particularly B College has contributed uh, in, as one of the committee members, uh, Professor Sen Gupta, he, he was one of the, you know, committee member for formalizing, you know, this IIT system also in India. So that's so B College has certain credit of, you know, taking, so the, the alumni of B College have contributed significantly in formulating the country's higher technical education in terms of IIT particular system. So that's how it uh, went on. And uh, today, if you look at, we have about 16 departments, uh, all faculty departments, and then uh, six schools and two centers. And yes. including uh, the VLSA technology, which was established in 2004, that also is a new thing. Uh, master's program is being offered now. Now, looking into the government of India's, you know, emphasis on semiconductors now, and Calcutta also being chosen as one of the hub, you know, to develop the semiconductor. Probably we are going to sign a couple of MOUs also with Bengal Chamber of Commerce and this, and so that we have a semiconductor arena also we would like to contribute there. You know, very nice to know uh, the growth of BE College. Okay. So, but at the same time, you know, I, I saw all the institutions actually started as a civil engineering schools and expanded into other technology and technical programs. And uh, you coming from uh, IIT, ISM Dhanbad, which is also one of the oldest mining schools in the country. You know, could, and also I saw that, you know, be, yours is the only institute among the four offering mining engineering program uh, that and, time. Uh, Anna University is also offering uh, yeah. oh, offer, uh, yeah. that time. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Fact, so can you just tell us, you know, something on mining engineering activity and how important is that for that area, including maybe in a brief about very, very few words about uh, Dunbad also. 
so thank <laughs> because you. where you come from <laughs> yeah so it's my proud privilege to talk about iit ism also in fact iit ism indian school of mines uh, was established in 1926 this was also incubated in be college only ah so way back in you know uh, like uh, 1906 This was the first beginning of a mining college in India, so that is in BE College, and this was basically uh, hosted. Indian School of Mines. The name was given in 1901 because at uh, that time the National Congress actually that was talking about uh, mm -hmm. the need for mine, mineral industry and the formulation of this. So that is how Indian School of Mines was basically incorporated in BE College. BE College nurtured it, incubated it, and then in 1926 this college was moved to Dhanbad. so that's how uh, there is a parallels you know we can draw or there is a incubation that has been done by v college so I, the credit goes to v college as well as now indian school of mines taking forward the requirement of country's raw material resources in mining uh, mineral engineering and mining machinery uh, and applied geology and applied geophysics these were earth sciences parallel with roorkee and uh, other universities yes, also yes yes so yes. we had actually that uh, core competency of need uh, looking into the exploration exploitation and uh, environmental you know uh, uh, control and all those things so this was started in the indian school of mines so there's a kind of similarity between b college and uh, you know indian school of mines being hosted there after that uh, indian school of mines actually as you know uh, it has grown into now iit system now uh, and uh, it's a it also went through several phases of transformations and today again it's a uh, full fledged you know iit system with all departments and centers thank you thank you so much you know I was also coming from Indian Institute of Science. That's the same time, nineteen not nine. Uh, Indian Institute of Science also started. Okay, that is actually a historic, uh, you know, agreement between the British government and the Tatas. You know, Jim Chirji was the creator. You know, at the same time, if you remember, nineteen not five, the the Jim Chirpur Steel yeah, yeah. factory Tata's was Steel, also yeah. been built. Tatas. So, uh, in city of Bangalore, Indian Institute of Science is known as a tata institute known as but it is always called as indian institute of science which is a very unique institution which created <laughs> and today you know it has it is the number one institute in the country offering both science and engineering programs as you all see even i could see from you you particularly pune college started as a science college and mm -hmm. then converted into the engineering mm -hmm. programs i think everywhere you know engineering and science have come together work together and to see solve the problems of the society that's where i could see the linkage of all the four five institutions but we are uh, today uh, discussed and deliberating so let me now come to all india council for technical education so this aict started as an advisory body as early as 1945 but it was somewhere you know as a committee only uh, until 1987 87 All India Council for Technical Education became a regulator. So, how did it become? In 80s, 1980s, lot of southern Indian states started lot of engineering colleges. They start when they started mushrooming Mushroom, yeah. large number of colleges. Government of India thought that there must be somebody regulating these institutions. So, AICT started as a, a regulatory body through the Act of Parliament in 1987. first 5 years actually was been headed by the chairman who, who is basically the cabinet minister of hrd human resources and development mhrd's minister were the first five chairmen so in a lighter vein i wanted to just if you see the names of the people the yeah. uh, simra was the yeah. first uh, chairman of aict and then vp singh uh, you could see uh, even arjun singh also uh the two of them actually went on to become the prime minister of the nation coming to the full time chairman professor khanna again connected to roorkee uh, yeah. <laughs> the thompson college of engineering he was actually university of roorkee i think by chancellor and then he became the first full time chairman of aict then to the see the growth of it today we have close to about 3600 engineering colleges and 3500 diploma institutions and lot of management schools and also stand alone pg diploma courses are also being offered today and then very recently we took a bba bca institutions are also because it talks about the basically the programs in engineering and technology including management 
So that means it is a, a, a ICTE is a regulatory body for all these programs. So we are a standard setting body for these technical programs and management programs in the country. So if you see the growth of this, today the large number of engineering graduates are graduating from these institutions, including the management graduates. Close to about 1.5 million engineers graduate every year okay, from these institutions. And this is happening from the last 10 to 15 years. So from if you count from you know 1987 onwards, how many engineers have graduated, it clumps to close to about two crore or more than that. So that's why we our engineers are placed almost everywhere. So what does AICT does is AICT develops model curriculum. And we are all again, you know, all these are done by the professors from all of your institutions, sure. including all IITs, NITs, and then, you know, all, all of them sit together, develop a model curriculum, and they be insistent model curriculum. But today, our emphasis is more on innovation, startups, through our Institute Innovation Councils, and many such activities. So I think, you know, the growth of engineering and management education in the country is a phenomenal, starting with the institutions like uh, uh, Gindi College of Engineering uh, and then Thompson College of Engineering, College of Engineering Pune and then Bishops, uh, Bishops College, <laughs> uh, College in RBE College in uh, Kolkata region. So I, you know, now let us come to here some more developed how the these institutions, you know, notable historical mainstones we heard from all of you. So what is the present status, how many numbers you are graduating, and what is your future plan? So if you, if I can start with the So uh, as I had mentioned, uh, the Anna University was established in 1978 by amalgamating four technical institutions, namely the College of Engineering in the Madras Institute of Technology, Alagapa College of Technology and School of Architecture and Planning. And if you see, there are four, 36 university departments are functioning in the four campuses. And we have uh, 40 research centers and uh, they, they, and all the, the faculty members, research scholars, UG and PG students, they work in all niche areas in science, technology, engineering, architecture and management. We call it as AU STEAM. If you expand the acronym, STEAM, Science, Technology, Engineering, Architecture and Management. So we have 40 research centers, 16 new research centers were established in the last three years. Uh, way back, uh, I would say, Center for Water Resources, uh, in, in sustainability areas, uh, we, uh, we have uh, many research centers, water resources, Institute for Remote Sensing, we have Environmental Science. So in several areas, uh, Institute for Energy Studies and uh, there are 16 constituent colleges which are established in rural uh, areas. 488 uh, uh, is, uh, colleges are affiliated to Anna University. Uh, 31 UG programs and 81 PG programs are offered at uh, four campuses. We have around 1,000 faculty members. Our faculty student ratio is 1 is to 15. And around 2,000 research scholars are pursuing their uh, research in various research centers in various departments. And uh, uh, we have uh, trans eight technology uh, transfer have taken place in the last three years. Uh, uh, we have inked memorandum of understanding with 54 foreign universities and uh, uh, R&D establishments, 91 uh, R&D establishments and as well as uh, premier institutes in India. We have 46 students club and in the recent uh, national institutional ranking framework under the state public university category and university is ranked first. And in the QS world university ranking, we have significantly improved our position from 800 to 1000 by in the last three years, from 800 to 1000 in the last three years to 383rd. And, uh, and I also just wanted to add there. Citation per faculty is number I, one. Yes, in the QS World in the, 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 the University top three, at least in India. And, and the, in the innovation science. ranking, Anna University is ranked in the top ten. Above us are only IITs and IIC. And, and in the next five years, our focus will be on, of course, on Industry 4.0, uh, AI and data science, and of course, biomedical instrumentation. These are the areas in which we would like to focus on drone. In drones also, technology also we are very strong and uh, uh, we, all the faculty members and uh, our uh, students, we work hard in such a way that uh, we should figure in top 200 in the QS World University ranking. 
as well as we should figure in top 10 in all the categories in the national institutional ranking thank you uh, professor pant i think you know you have said how you celebrated just about 3 years back on 75 years of existence of iit kolkata and what is your future plan as the director of that yeah thank you for this question uh, actually when you look at uh, right the background of the institute right from 1847 to now onwards i think we are uh, significantly doing exceptionally well our vision our mission is right to serve the nation right at large we would like to see the holistic development of our students and their role for the society right and i always tell my students uh, you should learn from your knowledge how to make the society happy right if you are able to learn that how the society can be ha- made happy with your science knowledge your technology knowledge engineering knowledge you will be able to serve or you are able to be a good citizen or a good right of the world in total i say so now you know that uh, when you talk about all these branches traditional branches of science and engineering and then several centers say like coaching center and need of the hour we have just tried right, to uh, look forward that what should we do in 2047 right then uh, uh, sorry 20, because that time the i told you will have 200 years of its establishment and uh, india will have 100 years right uh, of independence so uh, so we are just looking forward in terms of the vision of the nation right uh, the vision 2047 and how to achieve this we have made uh, our the short term goals and long term goals so uh, like uh, our main area because i have also vision to look forward in terms of the providing the sustainability concept right which are 17 sustainable development goals of undp food energy and water right which is the major concern so how we can provide the right uh, the nutritious food right uh, clean potable water and clean energy to all every citizen of the globe so keeping these points in mind uh, and at the same time we do believe in vocal for local also so the local right on uttarakhand right area itself uh, there are more than 1500 uh, msmes right so how our student can right connect with those msmes because if you are able to improve the quality of our own product right if you are able to give the knowledge of circular economy concept to every industrialist right uh, i think job is done so giving them this kind of right uh, every students we have a good tinkering lab uh, right in our campus and uh, we ask these students to look forward the multidisciplinary approach because that is the one of the i think uh, major challenges which we are facing nowadays right with respect to the branch which branch one should take. because parents and student they have that kind of mindset computer and it is are right uh, the only branches which are giving the money so i always tell them that money is not the everything right uh, and look forward right your role as a good citizen contribution towards the society and of course knowledge when you have you are when you are serving the nation money you will automatically right that will be a part of income so keeping you wanted to add something on indian knowledge system yeah, because i yeah, i did that in several and coming to that point yes, also yes. so so because that is very important that holistic development of child and uh, make them a kind of approach towards the multidisciplinary approach not just on one branch so uh, we have just started this concept and depending upon that right in the national education policy implementation we were the first who implemented this national education policy and make it, made it multidisciplinary so all these students they work among as a team right and they are looking forward their own startups own industry so we, I, we always tell them that look forward to give the jobs to many don't seek for the job right and that is where they are now going to be entrepreneurs so how to make them a good entrepreneur that is what we are doing. so we are not keeping them resting you know in the inside the classroom blackboard teaching we are asking them go out interact with the industry more and more industrial contact you if you want to go six months there you take that also and that's what they are doing now so that is what we are taking forward accordingly the curriculum several new say centers we have opened right and so that right it will be at par with our vision and also look forward in terms of the societal community connection that is very important so community connected so we have introduced those courses also coming to this indian knowledge system because you know now the the right the because of this right the kind of education system earlier right which was there they have become a kind of bookish right they they were just reading the thing but they are not trying to use it practically right 
at the same so that is practical knowledge transformation become very very important that has become and second thing is that traditional knowledge right uh, what was the ancient science we had already so much cultures in the india we were using lot of right the traditional knowledge of the science right astronomy right you see and uh, utilization of the water resources like right when how to make this water right food fresh food right how to keep it for a longer day how this clay and these kind of devices were being made that is a part of indian knowledge lot of herbs are available yes. which can be used for exactly. the right in a medicinal purpose so the indian knowledge system the vernacular language because that was also very important because many students they join from the rural background they are right they, they are not able to speak good right english but they have a depth of knowledge but because of lack of understanding of the right communication gap they were not able to do it so we started hindi also right and uh, even internationalization we have started we have more than 250 international right uh, students from different because global outreach is also very important so we believe in diversity we believe in right uh, the kind of concept of eid ied right uh, inclusion of equity and diversity concept and we are doing but at the same time our culture is very very important so yuva sangam like which is also yes, right yes. part of this so we invite the student from right other states also and they spend the time say two months during summer or student go to those university and that is also right they last time they visited to right hyderabad telangana and all the they interacted we have a very good himalayan explorer club so that is a kind of that how this stress buster right uh, approaches can be used which can be implemented in education system so the students are very much interested to explore these kind of things so himalayan explorer club they are working on rope design also right they are using those different kind of tools because that is the need of our because entrepreneurship skill when they utilize these things they understand also right so we are encouraging them to develop these kind of parts also like precision manufacturing machine so they are working in those area they are looking forward so when they visit the community they understand that in the, if, if they go to rural area they don't have the food to eat right they don't have the energy they don't have the water to drink and in hostel sometimes they waste so how to utilize the resources effectively that is also very important we have to tell our kids young kids that how much energy how much ac you are running wasting so many are not getting so i think this is also part of sustainability they should learn right plastic waste electrical waste so if you are just using this but use it effectively and also look forward the concept of circular economy and indian knowledge system i think this will when we that kind of culture which is our indian culture right if we just exchange it with others i think definitely the world will become a better place to live so this you. is what we tell them thank you thank yeah. you professor pal i also you made a very important point on delivering the education in the local regional languages yes, yes. so in that direction aict also started now offering programs yes. on in regional languages yes. at many institutions Sir, Anna, Anna University is offering civil and mechanical engineering in Tamil, Tamil medium. Tamil, you see, yeah. like from that. 2010 itself. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, you know, now AICT large number of colleges mm -hmm. now are offering in programs in mm -hmm. 13 different languages, and we have our textbook writing also is happening in yes. uh, in 13 different languages. Yes. Our Anuvadini, you know, the new yeah. tool, deep learning AI tool, mm -hmm. has been used to translate these books written by professors of IITs yeah. as per the model curriculum. and is also being done mm. so let me come back to professor viru uh, i think you know college of engineering pune has become a university uh, in 2022 mm. so what is the, your you know the future uh, plan yeah. for the institute as the director of this my chat i just tell you you know uh, apart from all these you know the, the three institutions which are Uh, mostly IITs and then Chipur and then Anna University. They were, uh, you know, autonomous uh, in the sense, you know, Pretty centrally long. funded and then, you know, ours was typically affiliated institutions to a Pune University. But uh, when when you are affiliated institutions, you have all your you know um, rules regulations That's defined by uh, a third party like uh, university. Uh, definitely you know we are we we are we were good in academics uh, and uh, you know the the uh, students what we receive in the institutions till we became university they were all based on the 
the entrance examination conducted at the at the state level after becoming university aict was generous to give us the all india quota and now we are receiving our students through uh, je examination that has really added a uh, very good uh, you know flavor to our you know the intake as such saying that uh, you know the research component in the university was restricted uh, due to the uh, affiliation system where the rules of the university were imposed now becoming a university uh, we have framed our own rules for you know the the research promotion like guide gu the uh, uh, the uh, provisions for you know the faculty to become a research guide which was earlier restricted so may all almost all of our faculty member they are now research guide so we are we are trying to become a more research oriented so from a uh, a typical you know the institution offering education to a research institution and to become a entrepreneur um, entrepreneurship university that is what is our focus and from that point of view what we have done is we are establishing a separate campus in fact it is already uh, you know uh, to the completion state of uh, the the civil structure by end of uh, december the entire civil structure will be ready <laughs> and the Uh, the translational research will be carried out there so we will be inviting industries to conduct their research activities they, the industry will come and establish their research centers in in the campus which is around 20 kilometers from the present uh, campus the government has given us a seed money and then our faculty member our students and the industry experts they will work on productization and that product will be you know made available for the as i uh, said uh, uh, the local you know the productization a replacement to the uh, there are two aspect replacement to the imported uh, you know the the products or imported equipments plus the uh, the research to support the local community mostly you know we are surrounded by a western we are in a western maharashtra which is known for agriculture very very well known for agriculture and then the, the we know that the agriculture field though we have agriculture universities and all that the mechanization and the the the, the machineries which are there you know they are very costly farmers cannot uh, yes, you yes. know purchase them so easily so we are working on how do we leverage that uh, the advantage of this uh, you know the translation part or innovation hub uh, to support the farmers we have one unique facility like bau institute uh you know professor sasrabuddhe was earlier you know leading the institution when it was college of engineering pune uh, visionary as you know he has uh, you know during his resume it was the first kind of you know the experiment which was done in any affiliated college as such uh, except i believe iit madras and mumbai to start a innovation institution a section 8 company within a in, within a campus which will support innovate innovation and entrepreneurs the, the one more activity we are conducting through that uh, wow institute sir we are now registering institutions under the wow institution so that we will we will you know train the faculty members from those institutions on entrepreneurship and the the innovation how what, what is innovation and what do you know entrepreneurship and and those faculty members and the students they will further you know propagate the the concept of innovation entrepreneurship to the yes. students of those uh, institution this is how yeah. as i said we are um, we right now we have 10 um, you know the programs at undergraduate uh, level 29 post graduate programs and mba uh, program which caters to uh, courses we have planned to expand to the double strength okay. we have been mandated really... by the government uh, <laughs> becoming university to expand to the double strength and that is our but we plan is to expand to the level state thank you you know i i visited uh, your institute for a mighty boot camp and yes. i saw how importance is given to the product research so i think that's where i think all, all engineering institutions are going we as a nation we need to really become an atmanirbharata that means even product research has to happen so we, because of the you know embargo on all critical technologies like nuclear or atomic energy or defense and or even aerospace i mean space technologies 
today we are one of the significant uh, you know progress we have made in these areas whether it is space technology defense technologies or atomic energy nuclear technologies i think we are actually as a nation established as a leader in these areas this is all because of these institutions which have given emphasis on productization startups entrepreneurial entrepreneurial activities of our students and research scholars research and development so let me come to you at the last you know uh, what is the vision for the future for the be college known to be a be college and play iiest uh, professor uh, murthy thank you sir uh, this presently this particular institute iiest shipur has uh, uh, nine uh, engineering departments and uh, one architecture and planning which you now ranks very pretty good in the national uh, nirf ranking and sci- four science departments hss and hrm department was established also way back just to take care of the placement related activity it's a unique uh, human resource management where they conduct a lot of talks and uh, you know the, uh, the soft skills and all those things you know to make them ready for industry and uh, eight schools we have and these schools are you know pretty innovatively they have started in 2010 one is in green energy where probably for the like in india only at four institutions we have this facility one of them in the east side is this we have an industry grade solar cell manufacturing unit inside yeah. the campus very good and uh, very good we have fabrication characterization facility and this was under mnre initially the fund came from that now dst funded us we have recently you know uh, upgrading all these equipment so that we can now these are being used and lot of you know very good quality research is being done in the institution in this particular area apart from this another new area is that uh, healthcare science and technology you know in homeopathy medicine also uh, we have some good uh, characterization facilities was established under healthcare science technology this is another unique uh, center that we have which is not normally present anywhere so we are doing some research related to cancer related uh, cell research and all and the the homeopathy medicine interaction with uh, cell uh, culture and all so this is another important area that we are working apart from this um, there are a couple of schools uh, and uh, centers which we are looking at now and uh, as with regards to uh, research if you see uh, initially the institute was primarily offering the engineering education as one of its major forte but this was you know uh, initially carved as a five year degree program institution and a masters program and doctoral program only exclusively so that you know we can provide uh, the high end technical education manpower basically normal be college like like four year be graduate program or three year programs were there diploma program but when this was uh, you know initiated it was basically for a five year uh, model it was initially uh, thought about but subsequently of course uh, still four year program is going on but we are slowly moving into integrated programs and some kind of now top up programs and all uh, and uh, apart from that uh, as uh, professor pan has mentioned the interdisciplinary kind of culture we are now bringing through these centers and schools only yes. where the faculty departments are contributing to these centers particularly as a uh, researcher as well as a project uh, right research project uh, contribution contributor along with their phd students so that is also providing a very good ecosystem for interdisciplinary research and uh, with regards to men- uh, this uh, research innovation and men- entrepreneurship if you see innovation we have a tagore center for you know green energy and business innovation this is a basically an, another uh, independent entity which nurtures you know about uh, 20 startups we have now and uh, all engineering problems you know specific uh, related to some uh, uh, problem solving skills and creativity you know we are trying to Uh, nurture them, and our students are, you know, connected with these startups. So that's how they get a very good environment there. So this began Kolkata being, you know, very close to, you know, the industry hub and all now, and we have industry partners like Bengal Chamber of Commerce and Industry yes. and all. So there we are, con- you know, closely working with them, and we have, you know, long plans to go ahead. Actually, in the research side, as uh, Professor Brud was talking about, like we are moving into research and innovation part now, which is now the government of India's priority also. That most of the uh, technical institutions are now going to start this. Uh, which are not has started actually in a formal way yes. and we have lot of plans you know to do a high end research there thank you professor murthy it was really a very nice experience to get some wonderful insights uh, from our legacy institutions and uh, you know we have transformed themselves into a uh, higher education institutions of international rank so i in the last uh, some of you many of you actually all of you have talked about the entrepreneurship and then uh, innovation and persistence on innovation and productization for our nation is very critical i think in this direction i also would like to share the icit institutions in the last uh, 
seven, say, seven, eight years through the uh, largest open innovation hackathons, Smart India hackathons, we were able to generate more than one lakh ideas. And this year, we have received a huge response for the Smart India Hackathon 2024. And as you know, these all these hackathons were actually at the end when it culminated into a, a prize distribution under the Prime Minister is always with us to really recognize the young people's contribution in the innovation and entrepreneurial journey. In this direction, I would like to share with you AICT institutions and along with all of our institutions, you know, done a phen phenomenal work actually. And today we are the third largest uh, startup capital in the world. And we are also in the research publications as a nation. We are in the fourth, uh, the top four in the world. And similarly, you know, on uh, PhD producers are also reasonably very large number of PhDs are coming out from our institutions. I think, you know, there is a good hope that all of our institutions are moving towards more on research and innovations and entrepreneurial uh, uh, educational systems. And it has become a hub of activity. And uh, we can definitely see because it Bharat at 2047 is no more a dream. It is other than the, you know, financially we are going to be in another, maybe two years we are going to be the third largest economy in the world. But at the same time, our higher education is also poised very well in terms of research, innovations and startups and entrepreneurial activities. So this is the time, it's a golden time, what do we call Amrit Kal. Yes. So I think our institutions are all poised to grow to a bigger heights. So first of all, let me thank all of you for taking time to be here with us at All India Council for Technical Education, wherein, you know, we are actually depending on many of you to give your, uh, I mean, your faculty coming here, advising the institutions. And there are many activities where, you know, we can take the so-called second and third grade engineering colleges to produce good quality engineers and managers for the nation. I think this is where I think the difference has come. So we are all working together to make that happen. So again, once again, thank each one of you for sparing your valuable time here at AICTE. Thank you. Namaskar. Jai. Namaskar.